Today on Real Garage, we're ditching the whole rear package tray assembly and replacing it with a solid firewall, since the racing fuel cell is exposed in the trunk area. So for safety reasons, I always fab up a firewall instead of just relying on the back seat cushion. This is gonna be one of those times I'm using a plasma cutter, some air cutoff wheels, and even a spot weld cutter. Now the top of the package tray will zip out easily with the plasma, but on the bottom where the rear seat mounts, I'm using the spot weld cutter first because it's multiple layers and I only want to remove the support without damaging any of the metal behind it. You've probably noticed I've used extra lighting quite a bit. You know, as my eyes get older, just like the rest of me, I'm needing extra light to see the critical areas that I'm working in. Now that leads me right into a real gear segment. This gear will definitely help you see better when welding. The helmet light accessory, part number 282013, will quickly attach to any of the Miller welding helmets, except for the T94 group. They use part number 281361. And even though it doesn't say it on the package, it also works with the Miller face shields. Now it comes two lights to a package and I plan on putting one light on my welding helmet and the other on my shaded face shield that I use for plasma cutting because that's where I seem to have the most trouble seeing where my cut lines are. Assembly is super easy. Just remove the headgear tension nut, O-ring and washer. and replace it with the new washer that has these little index notches on it. There's two different sizes of these. My Digital Elite takes the larger one and the face shield's gonna take the smaller gray ones. Then replace the O-ring and the flashlight mount. Now the flashlight mount definitely has a left and right side. It's actually canted a little bit so that the light shines in the center of the viewing area. Then reinstall the tension nut. And then you can position the flashlight to your liking. Yeah, there we go. Warning, read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. You know, another thing I like about the light kit is that when you swing the helmet up, the light still stays on target. You know, it's useless if it's pointing up. Here's another cool, quick lighting project I did. I've said it before, my eyes are catching up with my age and light is my new friend. I've been putting lights over some of the equipment in my shop but now I'm gonna make a swinging adjustable light to cover my lathe and my mill. One fixed light really isn't gonna do the job. I really need something brighter that I can adjust and position exactly where I need it. This is what I'm using. One four foot LED shop light. This one has a chain pull switch on it. 50 inches of three quarter inch square tubing. Uh, really the length is determined by your shop light. As long as it's long enough to extend an inch or two past the ends, you should be fine. And actually my four foot shop light was only 46 inches. Go figure. 
inch and a half by eighth inch flat stock, a four and a half inch half inch bolt, a six inch half inch bolt, three nylock nuts, a couple of half inch washers, and I'm using two three eighths bolts to mount this to my steel building. Now these will also be determined by what kind of building you're mounting it to. If you have a wood structure and you're going into the studs, just some leg bolts should be fine. All of this stuff you can get from your big box home improvement store. Go ahead and cut one piece of your inch and a half flat stock to six inches. This will be your wall mounting plate. Basically for me on this simple project, I wanted to use a bunch of scrap I had laying around the shop. And the easy button would be to use this three quarter inch round tubing that has an eighth inch wall thickness, which makes it perfect for half inch bolts. I then weld a spacer on it to move my pivot point away from the mounting base, which that way it doesn't hit it when you're swinging it. But then I figured it might be easiest for you to just go ahead and use the eighth inch flat stock for the whole project. So for that design, go ahead and cut two more inch and a half pieces off your inch and a half flat stock. and then round two of the corners, which actually that part's optional. I just think it looks better. Drill a half inch hole in the center. So three quarters of an inch from each side. And deburr the bottom if needed. On the mounting plate, I'm drilling two 13 inch holes, one half inch from each end for my mounting bolts. 13 is a 30 second larger than 3 8 so that'll give me a little room to play with. On the 3 quarter inch square tubing, drill a half inch hole, 9 16 of an inch from each end. I've got my Multimatic 220 ACDC auto set for 14 gauge. Just gonna be spot tacking it in. Weld the four and a half inch bolt in one of those holes. It helps to grind the plating off the bolt where you're gonna be welding. This will be the swing point. Then put the six inch bolt through the other hole with one of the nylock nuts on the top side. This will be the handle. Take the two small pieces with the hole and weld them to the wall mounting plate. One and three quarter inches from one end and one and a quarter from the other. I'm using a one, two, three machinist block to keep everything square and just welding the insides. I also bumped up the auto set on the Multimatic to eighth inch. Now just let that cool so it doesn't warp when I take it apart. At this point I painted it and I figured out how I wanted to mount my light. Instead of using the chain that came with it, I drilled a 3 32nd hole through the square tubing where the chain would normally mount to the light. And then I'm using 040 stainless safety wire running it through the light mount. Up through the tubing. And then back around and securing the ends. Also, make sure the chain pull switch is at the swivel end, not the outer end. For mounting to my steel post, I transfer punch the wall mount hole. Then drilled and tapped the holes for a 3 8 bolt. My steel posts are 3 8 thick, so this will be plenty strong enough. To install the light mount, slide the swivel bolt through the top hole. Then run a nylock nut up the bolt far enough so that it won't touch the bottom mount hole 
and add a washer. Put the swivel bolt through the bottom hole and secure with another washer and nylock nut. To adjust tension, tighten the upper nylock down to the bottom bracket until it touches it. Then snug up the bottom nylock nut to increase the swivel pressure. Much better. Key to using the spot well cutter is you gotta drill a little pilot hole first. I'm using an eighth inch drill, but again, the key is for me not to drill all the way through. You only need a little indent in order to use the pilot on the cutter. You can see where the spot welds are because it's indented in the metal. It's not a big deal if you drill all the way through. You're just going to end up having to weld the hole up. Cutter, you only want to cut one layer. All right, let's try that. Yeah, see? Now, we're gonna take an air cutoff wheel. Let's zip this off here. There, now I'll just use this as a rough template to make the new firewall. What I'm doing here is I made some templates for where the rear down bars go into the trunk area. Uh, so that way I can cut the new firewall to fit tight around those tubes. So I just made some lineup marks on the old package tray. And then I'll Clico this to the new piece so that I can transfer my marks. Eliminates the guessing game.
Now all I gotta do is make my marks, cut those holes out. We'll just clean up these holes a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'll actually cut a slot in here so that I can fold this up on each side so that I can slide it past the tubes. And then when I get done fitting it, we'll just beat that back down and put a little finish tack on the ends. I'm not gonna do any real fancy bead roll designs in this because it is gonna get covered with like a, a factory kind of package tray treatment but I am gonna put some stiffener rolls in it. Basically, I'm making these bead rolls the same way I did for the fuel cell trunk enclosures I did on season two, episode one. Just running them through three times, increasing the depth each time, instead of making one deep die pass. There, now just put a one inch, 76 degree bend in it. Okay, the main reason for this one inch lip is so that I can put it in my shrinker and give this panel a contour. The original package tray is perfectly flat from left to right, but it does have that contour in it. And I wanna make sure that I can match that so that the factory package tray trim and treatments will fit this also. There, the hard part's done. I got my top panel in. The bead rolls stiffen it up real nice, and my cutouts for the roll bars fit nice and tight. I'll stitch or spot tack this in place, and then pull the clecos out and plug weld the holes shut. Next, it'll be make a panel to close up this big hole, which should be easy because it's pretty much just gonna be a flat sheet. No special bead rolls or anything needed. I did make three of these supports that will get welded on the backside and that will strengthen the whole assembly up. Next time on Real Garage, we make the rear end track bar mounts on the frame. Gotta keep my rear end centered.